Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now I'm heading out to some wrecks. And I've just stopped over a mark of fish. Oh, wasn't expecting that. I've been picking up mackerel. Right there. Just had a little tiny pollock. I've been picking up, been picking up some mackerel, and I've got got a couple of three in a bucket that I'm trying to keep alive, so that when I get to these wrecks, I can drift over them with a live bit, and then maybe when the tide eases off, we'll anchor up, and see if we can't get some fish out of them. <laughs> these feathers just pick up everything. I've got myself a lovely looking balling ras. So it's had hold of him on his back, hasn't he? That's often a cormorant bite like that on the back. You see them colours on his tail? He's a stunner. There we go, three species and we've only been out half an hour. Oh, there you go. All I've done there is I bounced and found the bottom. Give it half a wind and just let it sit on the way out here there was a pod of dolphins and porpoise that was how I knew to kind of find this this spot with all this these little fish up there's a fish That was just kind of fishing away by itself. Oh, oh the micro pollock. Little tiny pollock. It'll be dolphin food in a minute. And I'm also fishing. Savage gear reel, just sink and draw method. Try and see if I can't find a bigger pollock. All over there is. I'm drifting in that direction, so I threw it a little bit up in that direction to let it sink. And then when I get near the bottom, just give it a few. Jigs like that, and drop again. I've got to the wreck that I wanted to anchor, and I've done a couple of quick drifts over the top to try and find out which way we're going to go. And I'm just in the process of putting the anchor over the side. Now, if you've watched the previous videos where I anchor up, I'll show you about how I, how I mark a wreck. And then how about how I uh, use an Alderney ring to haul the anchor. Now we're we're currently in just shy of 180 feet of water. So I'm planning on running out between 350 and 400 feet of rope. I've got the anchor set and unfortunately the wind's changing round and as the tide's picking up it's going to end up swinging us off the wreck. I've got uh, a live bait down on that rod and I've just put my scratching rig, my, my wrecking rig down on this one and I'm starting to get some, some interest, some knocks. But bearing in mind I've got 10 ohm meat hooks and I've got uh, a mackerel flapper on the top and I've got a mackerel fillet on the bottom. I was hoping for a ling or a conger. But the bites are that savage and erratic I feel like it's waiting or pouting. We'll um, We'll sit it out for another 10 or 15 minutes and wait for the tide to pick up. I didn't really wait long enough. I anchored up on slack tide. So all I had swaying the boat around was the wind and now that the tide's picked up with the wind, it's pushing us off the wreck a little bit. We're just sat on the corner and I want to really be sat just above it, 
just up tied at the centre of the wreck. I don't know if you can see the bites on here. See them? A ling bite is usually quite aggressive, it's quite a positive bite. A conga bite can be anything from a really, really aggressive bite to a tiny, tiny little mouth of the bait. Generally with Congo's arm of the opinion that if it's a little tiny bite, let it develop. If it's been pulled out of your hands, get the hook set. Currently in 179 feet. So I put out 350 to 360 feet of rope. Um, that would put us just ahead of the wreck. So that depending on how strong the tide is, I can either let out a little bit of rope and sit right on top of the wreck, or what I want to do is sit ahead of it, sit just up tide of it, so that little baits drop down. The scent of my baits draws the fish out of the wreck. Let's bring these in and we'll move. I don't know if you can see the bites on here, but I've got my wrecking rig. And um, a live bait down on there, and I'm just, just sitting on the on the top side of the wreck. But it was a really savage bite that. <laughs> it's making me think that it's a pouting or something. It's one of the things you can never be sure when you're when you're anchoring on wrecks. You can be sure it's, oh, it's a tiny bite, it'll be a tiny fish and it ends up being a, a massive great eel. Something small. Pouting give like a real aggressive bite for their size. That looks sick. There's another one. I think they're just savaging my mackerel bait. Greedy buggers. See if I can't get one up and we'll send it back down as a bait. On, uh, on slack tides such as this. It is good for drifting over wrecks. Because it gives you longer over the wreck. If it's a fast tide and it's only a small wreck, you'll be over the top of it within 10 seconds. Whereas when it's a slacker tide, it's a slower drift. It's better for drifting for things like ling. I think I might have picked some up on that. Ah, gone in the wreck. I think that's my live bait gone. Clean as a whistle. Missed that. I lost my live bait so I just switched it over to a long strip of mackerel and I set it up just above the wreck found a great big pouting <laughs> got some nice colours on them aren't they? I'm down. That was all it was, a ten or chino with a slither of mackerel. 
and it sets you up just above the wreck. Well, maybe, I don't know, four or five feet off, so that it's not going to get snagged up in the bottom and the fish would have to come off the bottom to get it. So I'm hoping for like a ling or a cod or a pollock. Why don't you find a pouching instead? I've actually got a bite on my, my wrecking rig. This type of rig, it's just literally, you set it up and you just leave it up the back. Set it off the bottom and you're just watching the rod tip. So it allows you to be able to fish doing something else whilst having this rig fishing. Because it is, it is, <laughs> It is a big thing having more than one rod on, especially if you get more than one fish on at a time. It takes a lot of work. Yeah, look, I've hit the bottom. Give it a couple of three lines. Set it up with the back. And that'll just sit the tide will push it down and it will just sit off the back like that and all I saw was I just saw the rod tip start going and I saw I got a fish getting quite a nice bite on this rod and this has got a mackerel flapper on a big running ledger get out of that wreck It's a fish that's got itself wrapped around part of the wreck. In this situation there's not much you can do. You can keep pressure on and hope you feel it move. Or you can slacken off and leave it on the ratchet and hope that the fish comes out of its hole. Now I don't, it doesn't feel like this fish is going to budge. Oh no. Give it a little bit of slack and see what it does. When it's a smaller reel you can sometimes bully him out. From the first two head nods it gave this feels like quite a good eel. I want to slacken it off, put it on the ratchet, sit the rod up and you wait for the ratchet to start clicking. It shows that the fish has come out of its hole. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll just see. Well amazingly I managed to get it moving. And it does feel like a decent sized fish. All I did was I kept a little bit of pressure on it. And then I, sl I just very, very gently slackened off just so there was like negative weight on it. And just waited for it to start nodding. I knew it was there, I absolutely knew it was there, just, just didn't give up on it. Now uh, that had held itself really tightly into the wreck, 
it found somewhere in there and it held up and it kind of wedged itself out and I could just feel like a little nodding when I was holding pressure I could just feel like a little bit of a bump every now and again and when I, when I held it under pressure I felt it give slightly so I knew it was somewhat there if it had just been solid it would have been solid into the wreck the thing with eels is you can't be scared of them it's when you're unsure of yourself you'll get you'll get nipped a bit smaller than I originally thought but he's up there in the 20s like I say he's a good stocky fish some head on him aren't they I don't know if you can see there see those little tubes on the end of its nose they've got a fantastic sense of smell it's how to get to the bait the bait might have gone off here there's something on the wrecking rig now Oh, it's off. That felt like a ling. Wasn't all there. Just kind of just playing with the bait. Drop back down and see if we can find it. Little eels can be a pain like that as well. They can. They want the bait, even though it's a big one. You just can't get it all in their mouth at once. If we can get the fish competing, then dropping a bait straight back down again. It might not be the same fish, but another one will come in and have a go at it. Yeah, look, it's come back again. See if we can't get that eel on the scales. I had some cracking eels last year, too big to even weigh, so I made this, which is a net sack, so I can put the eel in it and I can weigh it with the net. Between. 22 and 25, so I call it a conservative 23. Stick him over there for a breath of fresh, for a breath of fresh water. Ah, these are cracking these scales. Just got them off, uh, got them off eBay last year. I'd, uh, I'd had a couple of sets of scales, just cheap ones, just. Like cheap battery powered ones, they're alright until they get any water in them, then they're knackered. Get a good set like this, and they'll last you for a lifetime. All that rig was, I ended up trying to bend the hook out with there, it, it swallowed it too deep. So what's best to do sometimes like that is don't bother messing about with it because you'll just cause the fish cause the fish harm. So you just cut it off as deep as you can. And these hooks they rust away real quick. And all it was was see I keep all man in a bag already made up. So when something like that happens, all you do is just get another one out, try another one on. And all it is was it was a Cox and Roll 10 or meat hook on 200 pound triple fish. Now with that one, I had I had crimped it on, I was I was just seeing how the crimps would work. I usually tie them, but I thought I'd give the crimps a try. It worked fine, held fine. If I'd used anything lighter, you see there where all the lines all frayed up by its teeth, 
when it was there in the wreck and it was holding down it would have been rasping its teeth like that any lighter line and it would have just bitten me off I do like these green muppets I'm going to stick two on here just for the fun We have got something small pecking at that. And all I all I did was now this thick line can be quite intimidating to tie. But yeah, I find just a, a two or three turn uni knot is a good one too. That was it, as simple as that. Two foot trace. And I just put a macro flapper on there. See if we can't get these baits back down. I think it might have come off. If it hasn't, then it's very small. We are pouting or awaiting maybe. That's all it is. It's just my wrecking rig. You can see where I can see where stuff's been nibbling at it. I'll be what it is. It's just pouting. Give her a cracking bite, but just no substance to them. No doubt, I'll be picking one up on that soon as well. I've currently got a six ounce lead on there, it's not quite heavy enough. Because I've got big muppets and big baits and big rigs on there and it's heavy mono, you generally have to use, sorry heavy braid, you generally have to use a heavier lead just to get it down there. We're currently about halfway through the flood. So the tide is going that way, the wreck is just over there. The wind is taking us this way, so I've had to anchor us so that the wind is pushing us and the tide is taking the rigs that way. If, if that makes sense, it's kind of like... We're currently about 20 foot off the wreck. The wreck's just down there. The rig that I've got that conger on, that is it. It's that simple. It's just a sliding lead. This I think is a 10 ounce lead. And a 10 o Cox and Raw meat hook with a macro flapper. When you're lowering baits to the bottom like that, you're best keeping your thumb on the spool, which slows down the spin of the spool. So when it hits the bottom, it doesn't keep spinning, causing an overrun which is what causes what's called a bird's nest on the line on the, on the spool gets all loose and now we wait currently latched into a very big fish Now it did take line to start with. Oh no. That's the problem with fishing a wreck with more than one rod. Here it comes. Now unfortunately it's picked up the line from the other rod. But we'll deal with that in a second. Trace from clip to get it out of the way. Try and do something with this. Oh, there we go. It's out of its snag now, thankfully. Look what it's done to that rig. 
That was a very good bite. Not a big eel. At least you shouldn't feel it. Oh, that's because it's a ling. Huh. Well, that's a, a beautiful looking ling. It'll be, be 10 pound lately. That's what I've been eating. Little fish. Well, that was a good one. Yeah, taking on a mackerel flapper. Now, unfortunately, you can see uh, his swim bladder's blown, otherwise, I would have liked to have put him back. I've uh, just managed to unhook that eel, just popped it off with the tea bar. And first thing it did was it just went. Got straight hold of my foot. Now I'm wearing wellies and I did a little bit of a video that I'm, I'm, I'll put in here. But you need to be really careful of them. It's just, it's in that net there. Look, I've just... I've just put it in this net here and left it in water. So we can have a bit of a recover and then we'll get it on scales. But I reckon it's about £20. It's a little bit smaller than the last one. There are no notorious for doing that. If you're fishing with a couple of rods at the same time on the way up to just swirl round and get snarled up and as it was I got fouled up with the opposite rod but it got caught around the braid so all I do in that situation is if you can see just cut the mono trace cut the mono trace and keep your braid the mono is easily replaceable whereas the braid is more expensive and then you have to tie a leader knot and all that so I just just cut all the mono off, take all the components out, and usually the knot just falls apart. That's the beauty of them wrecking rigs as well, is that it's just just mono and two hooks. That's uh, that little ling there, he won't go back. But um, if you're lucky, I might be able to, I might be able to persuade my good wife to do a catch and cook. So we'll see about that. We've got about another hour and a half, two hours um, before the tide changes and it'll swing us right off the wreck again so hopefully we'll be able to get another fish out before then this was a really strange bite don't know what this is just feels heavy right now oh it's an eel Seen some, seen some wreckage that. A very lively ten pounder. Ah, oh, maybe more. Maybe go twelve. You see how they spin? Well, they do that in the water to try and rasp all the line up. This is why you need strong mono. <laughs> get a photo of him going T-Bard off I don't know if you can see on here on the end of his tail but it looks like a bigger eel's had hold of him it chewed that one right up so I've got another one out my bag all I've done take your hook pass it into its mouth bring it out through the centre of its skull like that so you've got a Hook point well proud and all I've done is it's just half a mackerel flapped off and sliced up. That's it, that's how simple it is. Now we're actually quite a way off the wreck. The wind's picked up, so that eel must have come out of the wreck from the centre of the bait. One more hour. 
I was just busy watching a pod of dolphins. There's about 15 dolphins over there, and this rod's going a cracking bite on it. I don't know if you can see the dolphins. Now, because I've got like a full macro flapper on there, I want to give it enough time to take it because if it's only a small fish, it'll just be racking about with it. Oh, there we go, there's a good bite. See? Nah, it's only something small. They are beautiful creatures, aren't they? Like I say, I'm not sure if you can see them. Pod, pod of dolphins. There's over a dozen of them anyway. Whoa, got the wrecking rig on this rod here. Rod's just arched right over. God, with a bite like that, I thought it was going to take the rod over the side. There we go. Now that I've got hold of it, it doesn't feel very big. God, the bite it gave was savage. <laughs> That's why. The fowl looked waiting. The greedy little buggers, eh? Yeah, the bite was savage. He must have just got himself all snarled up in a line. Have oh, well, a bit of something to do. We've, uh, we're about. 20 minutes left of the tide and then we're just going to start swinging around all over the place so hopefully we'll pick up a fish see the bite I think that was a small eel too small to get the whole bait in its mouth it was there for a couple of seconds and then was gone but at least we know there's something down there I was just in the process of trying to drop this duck down over the side. Just getting mullered by a little fish. Pouting or waiting or something. You see, because it loads of little wraps like that. This is my last decent bait. So it's worked out pretty well. I did bring some frozen mackerel with me in case I didn't get any, but I was lucky and I managed to feather some up on the way out here. I always try and, I always try and check the drag every time when I put the rod down. Because if, ever, if there's ever a situation where the rod starts hooping over and you need to lift into it straight away, you haven't got the time to check the drag. Tide's slackening right off, we're just about to leave the wreck. Now look, the little fish have moved in. They're just completely stripping me. Each one of those hooks had a big mackerel fillet on. And they just peck it away to nothing. We've, uh, we've swung, swung right off the wreck now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to call it a day. We've had, had some nice fish. We had, um, we had four or five pungas. Yeah, four or five pungas, a ling, um, plenty of mackerel, some nice pollock. Quite pretty, I, I like the little tiny ones. The ones that live down in the kelp because they're all mottled down the side. Um, quite a pretty battling wrasse. Uh, pouting. Alright, this was... Uh, I haven't had a chance to get out to the wrecks in, in months. Just because of the bad weather. So this was more of just a session to see what was... What was there, what was what was on the wreck still. It was uh, a hard day because the wind kept changing round. I had to re-anchor four times. I'm just letting this bite play out on here. I don't know if you can see the bite. And we'll um, see about getting the anchor up. A lovely day. And um, had dolphins and porpoises as well. Gannets. At one point in time there was even a big barrel jellyfish going past. Mm. <laughs> I thought it might have been. And a dogfish to finish off. Our ah, session wouldn't be the same without a dogfish, would it? Little cheeky, that's a spotted dogfish. 
Greedy sod, isn't he? That was a full mackerel flapper on a tenno. He's got eyes bigger than his belly, this one. Trick to unhook in these. Take hold of the tail, take hold of the head in the same hand. That way he can't rub you. Just bend the hook out, pop it out the side. There Well, ending on a fish. Can't beat that, can you? Let's see about getting an anchor aboard. I'll put a link into here of uh, how to anchor and, and how to retrieve the anchor. But what you'll see here is you'll see me pick up the rope and then a yellow boy, which is on an alderney ring on the, on the anchor rope. By steaming away, the, water, the resistance of the water hitting the buoy slides the buoy down the rope and the buoyancy lifts the anchor for you. So all you do is you steam away and you wait for the buoy to bob, which means that the rope has slid all the way right through until the anchor is by the buoy. Then you just put it in my hand. Yeah, look, you see how the anchor is starting to drip under the water? It shows that shows that the boy has reached the anchor. Pulling all this by hand, lifting the weight, would be absolutely backbreaking. This, all I'm doing is I'm just pulling a boy towards myself. There you go. Home time.